I'm Big T. Welcome to Big T Studio. I'm going to show you how to install Linux onto a computer system. Now, a lot of people try to do this on a virtual machine rather than an actual computer, and I just want to show some hiccups that can happen when you're doing this straight from a computer system. Now, before getting started on Linux, I want to show a comparison of what Windows brings to the table. I just put Windows 10 on this particular device to show how bloated Windows 10 is. It is a resource hog that from the word go is stealing your vital CPU resources and wasting electricity before you even open a program. Now, as I pull the camera into focus, you'll notice that you're at around 78% CPU usage, only to look at the resources. We've not even opened anything. This is your computing power being wasted. Physical memory is at 59%. That's out of six gigabytes used. It's using well over half of the memory and we've not even done anything yet. It drifts up and down and all this comes from Microsoft essentially spying on you. Now let's go over to Windows 7 install. I still contend that Windows 7 was the best version of Windows that was ever developed and it was really easy on the eyes. For the most part, everything released since Bill Gates stepped down has been a hideous mess. Now, we're doing the same thing. We're only pulling up that one program just to see what our resources are. we can see that Windows 7 is only using about 15% of memory. Now, can you see that CP usage is only between 1% and 4%? That's, that's great. That's where it should be. But memory is the big tail here. We're only using 12%, and this is just more proof that Windows has become glaringly bloated. As a side note, you could use this system to record track with no problems. Reaper, the program I'm gonna demo on Linux, will work on systems all the way back to Windows XP. It would be the other digital audio workstations that will not work unless you have an old copy of something else. Another note about Windows, Windows 10 will reach the end of its life on October 2024. 
At the time of this recording, that is only seven months away. Now, if you see from Windows 7 to Windows 10 how bloated it is, I've not tried Windows 11. Just imagine that thing being even more bloated. Now, this is where Linux comes in. I'm gonna give you a quick nerd alert. Linux is a blanket term for the operating system, but Linux is actually just one part of it. There are different distributions and those distributions cater to different audiences. Now, I'm gonna start with Ubuntu Studio. That's a funky word, Ubuntu. It's, it's an African word. Mark Shuttleworth, the guy that started this, was born and raised in South Africa, and it means humanity coming together or something like that. It's a nice little thing. That distribution grew from almost nothing to one of the most used systems in the world because it it is easy to use. So Ubuntu Studio is just a flavor of Ubuntu that's focused on content creation. Now I dabble with video, but my main work is on audio. Now, as this has come up, you can see in the upper right hand corner Look at me, I'm struggling with my education. Go to the left hand corner to get started, hit install in the upper right, I did it again. To get started, hit install in the upper left hand corner. Now, there are things that you're gonna to have to click through no matter which distribution you're working with. Almost all of these have gotten to the point where they ask you all the questions before they start. That way you don't have to keep coming back to the computer and checking on it. Now, things that have to be clicked through, in my case, I'm not connected to the internet, so I have to hit next. Two, the installer guesses the time zone and sometimes gets it wrong. Set this section up as desired before hitting next. Now, disk partitioning is probably the most confusing aspect of doing this, and really there's plenty of videos that explain partitioning better than I can. For this testing purposes, I'm just trying to use this one drive out of my system that has three drives. Uh, this particular one is not an NVMe, it's not super duper fast, but it's just an SATA two and a half inch SSD. This is still fast enough for audio recording. And these things have come down in price so you can get a good sized one for, for relatively cheap. Now I'm fumbling through this because I'm not stayed read up on this. In the old days, you'd typically slice it up as a slash boot, a slash, a slash bar, a slash opt, a slash temp, a slash home, and a slash swap. Well, actually swap doesn't get a slash, it's just called swap. Now swap, I'll just throw this out there, swap should be equal to or larger than your memory. And that's just in case the memory runs out of memory, it has somewhere it can store the information before it needs it again. Uh, equal to or double is good for modern swap systems. Now once you finally get this thing to take and you're moving on to your next step, the fourth thing you're gonna to have to do is add your name and name your computer and put in a password. Now since I'm the only user, I wanna log in automatically. I know it's incredibly insecure, but it's mine and I'm gonna do it my way anyway. Once you click next, it'll warn you that you cannot undo this. But in this case, if you're like me, you're doing this for testing purposes, let it go. Now, I don't care how good your computer is, installing an operating system is duller than dirt. And it can be long-winded. Go practice something and come back in about 30 minutes. I'm, I'm gonna speed this video up to get this over with. Now, once you've installed, Remove the thumb drive and hit restart. 
Look at that, where I have multiple hard drives, I needed to select the correct one to boot correctly. Now I told it that I wanted to log in automatically and it ignored me. So don't think everything's always peaches and cream. Now, one of the things I'm gonna show you is that yes, it comes with its own Office software. You don't have to go buy Microsoft Office for Linux or get it for $30 a month on the computer. You can just use this for free. It's called LibreOffice. And most distributions come with this automatically. Sometimes you might have to install it, but most distributions just put it in here for free. And you can save files in native format. It's got something called ODT or ODS for a spreadsheet. Or you can even save this in Microsoft format. I don't mind either way. Most of my documents are just for me and me alone. All right, now that we're up and running, compare this CPU. It's between 19 and 44%. It's bouncing up and down, but I'm running screen capture software even though I'm using the camera footage to show this. Notice that the memory is only at 1.5 gigabytes out of 5.7. That's 20%, which is still much better than Windows 10. Now, I was going to go on with this video, but I want to stop and get the videos of me installing Fedora and me installing AV Linux. Those are two other operating systems that are, uh, one is geared towards audio video, the audio video Linux version. Uh, it's a small distribution, but you're going to be surprised at what it brings to the table. And Fedora is the testing area for Red Hat Linux. And Red Hat is the American version of Ubuntu. It's its own critter and their testing stream is where they test ideas before they put it in the enterprise version. Since we're not necessarily an enterprise, we're just a home hobby, Fedora is gonna be just fine. So bear with me as we go through these other versions. Thanks for watching.